I am uh, an electronics engineer. My current position is Fermilab is senior engineer, and uh, I am the deputy head of the co design department in the um, newly announced uh, um, SQMS division at Fermilab. Okay, uh, yeah, this is a tough question. <laughs> um, I, I think uh, I, I, I always, I've always had some passion and talent for the, you know, mathematics, uh, try to solve uh, difficult problems. Um, and uh, this is what brought me to, to study engineering. So what, what brought me in the uh, HEP, the high energy physics field, um, there is a, a the collaboration between Fermilab and the University of Pisa, that was my university. Um, and so I applied for a summer student in 2011. Um, and then it happened that I was selected. So I came to Fermilab for three months and I really enjoyed my time here, in particular, you know, like, uh, like just a student to be involved in, uh, in you know, in, in such. Uh, amazing laboratory with, with all these technical activities. Uh, this was really great. And then uh, um, I was confirmed to, to, to have an internship for one more year. So I stayed like nine months in 2012 at Fermilab. Um, and then my supervisor moved to CERN. And uh, I, honestly, I thought, I, I've always thought that CERN was too big for me, that was too hard for me to access. At the CERN, um, instead I submit my application and uh, I was selected, um, and uh, and this was one of the best experiences I ever had. Um, okay, so my first impression was uh, huge. <laughs> I felt a little bit lost, honestly, at the beginning, but. Um, I found a lot of people that uh, were uh, uh, helping me, um, you know, both of the administrative, you know, you know also regarding my job, so, you know, all the technical side. So, um, that was comforting. <laughs> I was working as a technical student, I was in the RF group, uh, and I was working on some uh, interlock parts for, uh, you know, the accelerator for LHC and um, you, you know what I remember from that experience is even though I was just a technical student I, I, I was giving a lot of responsibilities I was responsible for uh, the design and uh, um, that that was a good feeling you know was um, someone was trusting me for, for my activities this, this was an exceptional um, opportunity to grow I was a fellow and I was a pretty fortunate fellow because I was part of the innovative training network, Marie Sklodowska Curie uh, program. Um, and then my program was called Pacman, um, that was uh, uh, to realize a prototype of alignment for the, for the click accelerator. That we were uh, basically a um, multi functional team. Uh, we were 10 uh, fellows, uh, all of the different background, but we were called to come together and focus on a common goal. So um, so it worked pretty well and also helped to develop, you know, leadership skills. Uh, and then also there, uh, I, I was in a collaboration, but still I had to focus on one part of this and then I had to interact with other people around. I think Sarniza is a big playground and is uh, probably the best place where uh, a, a student can be. Um, as for the reason that I say, like there is uh, uh, there are a lot of opportunity of interaction and growth, uh, the technical field and not only the technical field. Um, I think that also the turnover concept that CERN has for students and fellows, uh, even though you know, it might be a little bit scary uh, to spend some amount of time in a place and then you have to leave, uh, but in reality this is a great opportunity to, um, you know, to trigger new ideas, to bring in uh, new, new energies. <laughs> um, 
So let me let me think about that. There is a, I think there is a great uh, um, initiative from there that is the Idea Square uh, that I think is is for you know triggering new ideas and new research ideas uh, that are uh, you know synergistic but not perhaps related to the uh, to the main act activity that is the accelerator. Um, so I think that is so great and could be perhaps highlighted a little bit more. I mean, for me, it was honestly not too bad because uh, um, I, I already knew Fermilab um, and I was in contact with uh, people at Fermilab and also for personal reason because uh, <laughs> That the, the, the guy that then became my husband was already working here, so, so for me it was a, was a natural good choice to come to Finland. Yeah. So although I started as a, um, working on diagnostics, so so you know developing all these specific instrumentation and tools that are needed for the accelerator, particular accelerators. Um, I have uh, moved since a couple of years to quantum computing um, and you know there is um, an interesting debate whether uh, uh, HP is useful for QIS or QIS is useful for HP where HP stands for uh, high energy physics and QIS for quantum information science um, and uh, I, I would say that they, they are both you know synergistic and they, they should work together um, you know on one side we use technologies that uh, have been advanced by HP <clears throat> and uh, this is used to, uh, to put on, on non QIS applications like quantum computing um, and then on the other side, the discoveries and the research that is pursued by quantum computing can be uh, adapted to the HP uh, scope, for example, uh, for the discovery of uh, new particles, uh, for, to improve the sensitivity of the dark matter of our searches. Um, so, 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 yeah, they, they really work in, uh, in synergies together. Uh, so, and this is why it is important to advance in HP because uh, um, even though we might not find an application that have an immediate impact, uh, this technology advancement is so important for us that we will find uh, an, an application <coughs> in the future. Because as I said, CERN is a big playground and uh, someone that comes from CERN as, as has been exposed to, uh, you know, to enormous technical challenges, um, and and then also, you know, there is a, there is a, um, there are some similarities between our laboratory, Fermi Lab, and CERN, and actually we 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 do have the collaborations. So, for example, for the CMS project. Um, so so, you know. Besides the similarities, there is also a technical background that I, I believe that some fellows have, um, and, and we are in huge need of, the, <laughs> of these technical skills. So the, the type of profile that is it is pretty broad because the center is called SQMS, that stands for Superconducting Quantum Materials and Systems. So uh, basically, we, we have opening on uh, materials. So we have openings on uh, algorithm, quantum algorithm. We have openings on uh, uh, electronics engineers, but also mechanical engineers. So my advice is that uh, you have to write what you have done and uh, be very clear on that. Um, and uh, if, if your work is valuable, uh, your resume will, will stand up. And uh, also, don't be humble. I mean, in particular for people that come from CERN, I, I know that uh, they have all been involved in very interesting projects and that they have all been like valuable contribution. So, uh, so don't be shy and, uh, you know, write your results and, um, and then just write what you have done. This is it. 
so the so the job committee will be very diverse and uh, uh, there might be one or two people that are in your exact field and then there might be other two to three people that are not in your field so i don't think it works to you know to present too many technical details because uh, eventually if the people are interested will make a question on on this so again, I think it's important to um, to just be yourself and uh, uh, don't freak out <laughs> and be relaxed. Um, you know, our work environment is, is a pretty relaxed one. Uh, we, we are all friendly with, with people, um, so, so and we, we are looking for for uh, you know, people that will adapt to, to this environment. So. Uh, so just show what, what you have done and just show what you are confident in showing. Um, I, I would say don't add too many technical details because again, the, the, the committee, there are different people, um, but leave room for questions. Um, and then other things that maybe you can add either in an interview or uh, in a resume is uh, um, whether you have been involved in outreaching activities those are things that are pretty important for, uh, for example, DOE centers, like the one, the one I am involved in, but also at CERN, this was the part that was very important for my program. Um, so, so, you know, the idea is that uh, we are, as a scientist and engineers, can serve as uh, an example for the community. You don't have in Europe, everybody knows CERN. In, uh, um, in our region, in our city, everybody knows Fermilab and uh, we should really be an example for our community, um, an example of uh, uh, diversity and inclusion, an example of uh, uh, you know, technical advancement and uh, uh, you know, love for science. We, we like what we do and we should show this. And so I think this applies also to interviews. One of the application, potential application of quantum computing is also to change the way we will possibly communicate and uh, whether you know superconducting quantum processors are, exist and uh, uh, as I said, they are, they are available, there are companies that are deploying them and users can access their platform. Uh, they are still limited in, uh, you know, in single cryostat and uh, um, the, it, it's not uh, it's not an easy task to interconnect them or to realize, you know, um, a, a wide quantum network or a quantum internet. So uh, to do that, there is a, a project that I'm getting involved. It is on transduction. Uh, so basically, the idea is to use, uh, um, you know, optical materials to. Um, to up and down convert microwave photons to optical photons. And so this will enable the uh, transfer of quantum information at long distances. So this is a very new project, but it's very interesting. And I think it's a great, it's a great potential. Um, so also for, uh, for this, we need a brilliant mind <laughs> to, to join us. It's a, it's a huge challenge. It's something that nobody has done so far. So, you know, you, you also feel like pioneering, <laughs> uh, but it's a, it, it, it's a good feeling, but also you, you feel the load of uh, something that is not known and that you also don't know. I cannot exactly say how, because I think it's just something that <laughs> I knew <laughs> that exists. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's just a, a, a great platform to, to bring people together. Again, there is a, there's a big turnover at, at CERN, so uh, it's good to keep contact. It definitely is a, you know, it's a portal. So you can use to, uh, at, like as I did, to, uh, to advertise perhaps opening positions that are interesting for people with that background. Um, the, the, yeah, the, the other way is to, to stay in contact. Uh, so for example, if I would be a fellow and right now it's certain that I had to leave, 
I would also look at uh, the step not long meeting where they work and uh, you know just to, to have an idea on uh, what kind of fields I, I can apply. Yeah, sure. And uh, this is all because I think we share a common background, um, and we we have, we all went through, uh, you know, similar uh, experiences. Um, and so, you know, if we can help, why 